questions. Representative Roberts. Uh, I'd just like to change one vote, please, on item number th uh, 33 from yay to nay. So ordered. Thank you. Representative Shanley. Pursuant to Rule 7D on the next legislative day, I'll be introducing legislation relating to motor vehicles. Thank you. Representative Kazar. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Announcement. Proceed. Um, so yesterday was June 19th, and we were otherwise occupied with a long calendar and some events, and so missed the opportunity to mark um, the celebration of Juneteenth, which was um, uh, started when freed slaves in Galveston, Texas, um, learned that the, about the Emancipation Proclamation. Even though it occurred in 1863, it wasn't enforced until um, the end of the Civil War in 1865, um, when Gener General Gordon Granger and his Union troops arrived in Galveston with news that the war had ended. Um, at the time, what happened was that uh, many people returning from um, fighting in the war came back and did not notify their slaves that they were freed. So it wasn't until the announcement on June 19th that they were um, actually freed. So this, it was a marking of an important day in our country's history um, and worth noting. Thank you. Chairwoman Williams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like the opportunity for a point of personal privilege, if I may. What is your point of personal privilege, Chairwoman? My point of privilege is that I was mentioned in numerous mediums, and I would like to speak on them, specifically from my point. Proceed. Thank you. Juneteenth. As representatives, I'm trying to get my breath. Take your, take your time, Chairwoman. Just shared with us. That was an important history in time. I first will respond to comments that the governor of the state of Rhode Island presented with regards to the situation that took place yesterday. In her response to my statements on the radio today, the governor claims that she does not know why I declined to shake her hands. That is not true. She knew exactly why I declined to shake her hands. She chose to walk by two other of my colleagues and myself and go to her friend and shake her hands. The right thing, the proper thing to have done is for her to have shaken or even acknowledged everyone in line, but it was an orchestrated move. She also mentioned that we should be focused on the big picture. What really is her big picture? Because it certainly wasn't our big picture of that moment. She was asked about any difficulties that her and I have. And she says she doesn't know of any difficulties that her and I have had. But I have spoken to her a few times about those disses that she has done repeatedly. And I understand that sometimes some of us may offend another person but unintentionally. And most often, if it's no, made known to that individual that you offended me or you did something inappropriate, they would check themselves and make sure that they're more careful or cautious the next time. But her behavior has continued repeatedly to the point where I finally said, this is not a coincidence, 
It's not accidental, but it's her dissing me, disrespecting me because she don't like me or whatever reason she wants to claim it. You can shake your head all you want. But nobody can tell what I experience better than I can tell you how I feel and what I have experienced. She says, if I felt that she disrespected me, no. You deliberately, she deliberately disrespected me. No question about it. You all can go and look at the tape and you can look and see it. You may have seen it and not saw and you did not see what actually was going on. But now with me bringing it to light, when you look at it this time, you will see exactly what was done and by whom. She also said, we offer pens to everybody, included me. Passed out about 12 pens. The same things that they always do. But what she always have been do doing or has done since she's been in office and has signed off on these bills is that she gives the pen to the sponsor, the prime sponsor. And yes, maybe she gives additional pens to other individuals that are involved. Like she's done and many other governors before her. Why was it different yesterday? She also stated that we have sat down frequently and work very hard together. We have worked on a number of things together. We have sat down frequently to talk about how she's been treating me. It's not recent. This is not recent at all. But this is where it stops. We have worked on a number of things together I would love to know what they were. I really would like to know what they were. So, she wants to throw shades. She wants to challenge me. I'm up for the challenge. I don't throw shades. I speak to it now. I know there's a couple of fans of her up in here. That's your business. I respect them just as I respect her, but it's troubling that on a day that should have been celebrated by all women, the governor instead chose to disrespect and minimize the very active role I had in getting this legislation to her desk as the prime sponsor. I am proud of the historic bill that was passed by the General Assembly and it is a shame that the governor tainted this event with personal pettiness toward myself that had nothing to do with the Reproductive Privacy Act and the hard work that went into its passage into law. It is no secret, none whatsoever, that I have a long that I have long been a thorn in the governor's side while I have frequently brought to her attention, both publicly and privately, her administration shortcomings and failures in the regards to helping all the people of the state of Rhode Island, all the people, not bringing in all these out of towners, doing what our Rhode Islanders can do and probably much better than these folks coming in here and messing up. UHIP, 
DCYF, MTM, and until recently, after several years of being ignored by her and her office, the diversification of our judiciary are all things, but not only. I have been very vocal and critical about because that is my job as a state representative, to represent the ills, the goods, and the people of the state of Rhode Island. I believe it is apparent that public optics are extremely important to our governor. She talks about political grandstanding. I don't have to, I don't need to, I'm not into politically grandstanding. I am and I pride myself in getting the job done, working with everybody who has that same commitment and drive to do the right thing for the people of the state of Rhode Island, period. And it is why she has chosen to gloss over the deliberate message delivered to me by her chief of staff, Brett Smiley, behind closed doors and away from the cameras that I, as the prime sponsor of this bill, would not be receiving the pen that signed this bill into law as it's done with every single piece of legislation that comes across her and every other previous governor's desk. It is also a shame that the pen that signed this act into law will no longer go to its longtime champion for which I had planned and I asked before we entered the room while we were having our briefing, I asked specifically to make sure if there was no objection by anyone else, any other elected official in the room, for me as the prime sponsor to have obtained that pen. It wasn't for me. Yes, it was a great moment, but it was for my colleague and friend, Edia Jello, because she had championed this she had sponsored this legislation. She had carried the water of this legislation for years before I took up the courage to do so. And that was not able to be done because of that little plan, that little move, that little thing that she did, they did, consciously and spitefully did. Sadly, it was not given a chance by the governor and her chief of staff. The governor's unprofessionalness was captured on video as she repeatedly ignored myself, the prime sponsor of this bill, at the bill signing and then proceeded to call me rude. Well, the only one that was very apparent, very obvious, and very rude was none other than the governor of the state of Rhode Island in that room at that moment. Not I, not my colleagues that she disrespected, and this I speak for myself because they may not have felt like I felt. But I saw what I saw and I experienced what I experienced by the hands of the governor of the state of Rhode Island. Yet today, talking with Steve Clamking, she claims ignorance to what had transpired. Mr. Smiley should not have broken long-standing tradition without his boss. He would not have without his boss approval. So it is disappointing to hear her further comments on the matter, greatly minimized her role in this unfortunate episode that spoiled a night that was meant for celebration. Her 
and her staff's comments to me last night are a far cry from what she described today on the radio. And that is unfortunate for not only me, but for every citizen of the state of Rhode Island. I know, I, I know I'm known for my directness. I am who I am. But I pride and I know whose I am. And that's far important than anything. Whether for good or for bad, but that is because I believe in telling the truth, regardless of the consequences. I can only say that I wish the governor operated in the same way. But we all have our own cross to bear and our own level of integrity. rather than blaming me for an episode that she deliberately created herself. She should have stood up as a governor I would love to stand next to, a governor that I would be proud of and say, I'm sorry. My intention was not what I did, but does it mean anything? No. Her way of trying to correct this situation is by sending one of her staff at 4 o'clock this afternoon to give me a pen in a box. Well, as I mentioned, it's not about the pen. I could care less about that pen. It was the point of what I wanted to do with that pen. The pen that she took, signed on the bill, and then put in her pocket. That's not what she has been doing. That's not her practice. But she did it last night. She did it to me. Surely, Mr. Smiley informed her of my request in the briefing. So she came in there prepared. And she dissed all three House members and went directly to her favorite and close friend. See, I am not a cold, calculated person. I'm not. I don't, I'm not. And that's one of the reasons why it hurts so much. It really hurt to the core because those treatments are real. They are real and they're often done by individuals in this room. But this time it was done by the governor of the state of Rhode Island and I am supposed to go along to get along. Not acceptable. Because if it was the other way around, you better believe there would have been reprimand. I certainly would have been put on blast. Now, do I expect her to sign any of my bills that go through? Probably not, but guess what? They're not for me. They're for the individuals for whom I represent. And those are the bills that I put in on their behalf. What do I need? I have integrity, courage, and loyalty 24-7, not when it's necessary. Not only when it's necessary. I am no one's window dressing. I am one of your colleagues, one of 75. I am an equal. 
even though I'm not and have not been being treated as an equal. Rude? My parents didn't raise any of us to be rude, but they raised us to be honest and to be strong and to be truthful. I don't have the education she has. I don't have the money that she has and made off of the state of Rhode Island. But I got much more riches than she will ever have. Ever in this lifetime. Integrity, courage, and loyalty is something I'm very proud of for my family to have raised me in. I am proud of that. So, this struggle is real. I thank all of you who are genuine. And I also thank those of you who continue to believe that it doesn't exist. Because those are lessons for me to bring me up to the next level and how to handle those issues and those individuals. So I thank you all. I truly do. But just know that my intention was for you, Edie, because you deserve that. You carried, a, a, although I was there with you all this time, you carried that bill. You carried it with all your might for all those years. So that pen was going to you for your time, for your dedication, for your commitment, for your drive. It was going to you. It wasn't for me. So I asked for it specifically and purposely because I had a plan and it was genuine with much love for all the things that you have done. But I'm telling you all something. This stuff is real. And she is not. There is nothing, not a pen, not her signature on a bill, nothing that will make up for what she did to me last night. Absolutely nothing. There is no apology that is going to be good enough for her to bring to me. Because again, if she really wanted to be genuine and sincere, and maybe with the possibility of letting this water be under the bridge, instead of having a pen delivered to me at four o'clock, she should have had them ask me to come and see her and she deliver me a pen herself. But even though I wouldn't believe nor trust that the pen, the pen, was going to be the actual pen used to sign the bill. So with that, Mr. Speaker, I thank you for the opportunity of being able to share my experience and to let you all know the struggle is real. All of this racism is real. All of what has been going on in here is real. But my mouth is going to continue like it has yesterday, today. As long as God allows me, it's going to continue till I am no longer here. The truth, integrity, courage, and loyalty will run through these veins in this body forever. Thank you. Thank you, Chairwoman Williams. Um, I regret that you had that experience last night, Chairwoman. I will say that in my 11 years here, I have never seen a representative not get a pen at a bill signing when they were the prime sponsor. 
there was one prime sponsor and one pen, and I've never seen that not being delivered. So I regret that occurred to you. It appears disrespectful to you and the entire House of Representatives. I recognize your work on the Oversight Committee. I thank everybody on that committee that comes forward and does honest work on behalf of the people of the citizens of Rhode Island. I regret that any negativity comes from that hard work. And the House of Representatives will stand by its colleagues that are disrespected by other branches of government, Chairwoman Williams.